Hello, everybody. Welcome to the latest episode of Building Brotherhood. I'm here with Terry Provey. Uh, so I first met Terry when I was working as a personal trainer at 24 Hour Fitness. I remember uh, approaching him. It was in the corner of the gym on an ab machine. Correct. Yeah, I That's think correct. it was on an ab machine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, there was something about him just his positivity. <laughs> when I first went up to him to say, how are you doing? He just had this huge smile on his face. Yeah. And then he just got, hey, I woke up in the morning. I'm feeling good, feeling grateful. Can mm-hmm. you <laughs> give, me, give me that same intro you gave when, when well, I first it's met similar, you? It's similar to what I just told you a little earlier. I woke up north of the dirt and the rest is extra. But now I add to that, I woke up north of the dirt and I'm carrying on. Life is good. So it's basically saying, um, no matter what goes on, if you wake up, you've got another chance. Life's about choices from that point on. So you can choose to be happy. That's what, that's what, you, what I got, you got from me, is that I told you I choose to be happy. And it is a choice. It, it definitely is a choice. So um, when we met and when I met you, I was quite impressed with you, first of all. I was quite impressed with you because you have the ability to listen, okay? I'm still working on that. (laughs) I'm still working on that. Okay, so, um, and you, I like a sponge and smart at the same time. Uh, I'm very impressed. I've always been impressed with you. You know, um, I think you have a bit of class and you had to come from mom and dad, somewhere your upbringing. You got a bit of class that is just awesome. Keep it up, Albert. Keep it up. I mean, it is awesome. You at a young age and as a young adult, um, you have a lot to offer to other young adults and those that are younger than you. Uh, And I am quite impressed with this, what we're doing right now. This is awesome. This is what I mean by you. You are, you're finding a way to use tools to help people. You are a helper. And I am as well, I am as well. But um, you're taking it to the next level. I wanted to do something like this, but I, I won't say life got in the way. Uh, just I'm doing so many other things that I wanted to do too. I believe in uh, advent- happy, healthy and happy, adventure and fun, flexibility and options. You know, those are my six, okay, that I live by. And the adventure and fun is my biggest one. Trying every single thing that comes to mind, trying just to uh, experience it. You know, I've sent you pictures of things I've done or things I'm doing or videos, et cetera, et cetera. And um, I'm still young for as I'm concerned. I don't think there's nothing that I won't try to do that takes me outside of my box, okay? I have to get out of the box. I just cannot do what everybody else does. Just can't do it, okay? And if I see something that puts me on the edge of my seat, and I'm oh my, 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 I gotta do it, gotta do it. You know, that's the way I like to live. I like to live excited. Um, I just did a very exciting thing December 10th. Okay. I got married to my lovely wife. Really? Yes. Wow, congratulations, Thank- Terry. Her name is Sandra. And you also realize my birthday was February 19th. She threw me my very first birthday party I've ever had in my whole entire life. Wow. She bought me my very first birthday cake. <laughs> and I never had anybody sing happy birthday to me. All the people at my party celebrated me and sang my happy, bir- happy birthday. So the, those pictures you sent me, they were your, they were your party? Your, your yes. Wedding? Oh, wow. You were looking had, great. I, you I, were looking did great. I, did I see my wedding pictures? Uh, uh, you sent me some pictures when you were in the suit. You were looking really good. Your beard was oh. just really well trimmed. And yeah, okay. Now, there's my wedding was December 10th. 
of 21. Her birthday was February 19th of 22, of course. And uh, there's several pictures going on there. But we're not making this all about my wedding and my birthday. You, you've got a uh, platform and a format here that I need to follow. What are we doing today? <laughs> so I wanted to ask you about your life growing up. So I know you went through the military. And yes. then after the military, I think you invested that money into apartment complexes, even correct, uh, correct. Your, your own gym. And you yeah. even hosted a uh, pro NFL or is it is it pro football players in your gym? Okay, okay. it was it was pro uh, like Cleveland Indians on the okay. off season. I had doctors and lawyers come to my gym. It was called I don't know if I ever told you Terry's Guaranteed Physical Fitness. Okay, okay, the guaranteed part. <laughs> He shouldn't have been in the title. <laughs> Probably shouldn't have been in the title. I was young at the time. I had a little arrogance going. You know, I thought I could. And then I had to find out people had to want it bad enough. You know, but I was in my 20s. I was in my 20s. So I didn't. I, I Like I said, I had a bit of arrogance going there. And people came out. And it was a learning process. And it actually was a learning process about people themselves. People's willpower, people's tolerance, people's uh, drive to better themselves or to um, maintain the health, okay? I had uh, extremes. I had those that really came in and really was down about it, but they felt like they should do something because the doctor said something. Then I had mm. those that were extreme. You know, I just couldn't do enough. It was like, come on, let's go, let's go. They were working me out. Mm. <laughs> you know? okay. But, okay. and those were the professionals because they were in the off season. So they had to have a certain level of intensity about their workout. So um, I provided that, but it was, it was a challenge. And the more of a challenge was people that didn't have self-esteem, didn't have motivation. You know, you you are training yourself. You're more like a therapist at times, you know, uh, trying to encourage, trying to uh, help them get an understanding that it, it's a process, it takes time, but most people don't have patience with themselves. Most people are hard on themselves. Guess who? <laughs> Me. You know, most people are very hard on themselves and not realizing that they need to tell themselves, I'm okay. No matter what, I'm okay. And everything I do here is for self, self-love, self-improvement, uh, which you, you are very aware of. Um, now, for example, I had a doctor by the name of Dr. Dancer. He would come to my gym and he just says, I want to leave my profession outside the door. So I'm come here work out and have a good time so i played jazz for him while he worked out huh. you <laughs> yeah. played jazz I, I, for him wow yes well i would okay. accommodate my clients by um having certain accommodations there for them that they would like you know some people like jazz some people like hip-hop some people like what happened. but that was way back then you know it was different types of music for different types of people some people wanted uh bottled water some people were okay with tap water some people wanted, uh, I'm, I even did juicers, you know what I mean? I, I provided juicers after the workout, you know. Okay, uh, okay. It, was, it was just a gym of a lot of pampering, you know what I mean? And uh, it lasts, I had a good five, six year run out of that. Okay. You yeah. know, and uh, I've always been an entrepreneur. So after that, um, I moved into the limousine business. I moved into the janitorial business. All of it was my own. All of it was my own. I didn't work for anybody. Didn't work for anybody. And um, I have uh, two sons. Um, and it was, everything I basically did was for myself, but to set example for my sons and my grandkids to say, no matter what, working hard at it, make up your mind, 
and do, you can do anything you want to do, anything. And uh, I still to this day do the same thing. Okay, as you know, I own a 40 foot yacht, I own a plane, you know. Uh, you own a plane? I didn't know you own a plane. Yeah, yeah, I did. Wow. I'll send pictures to you. I'll send pictures to you. Okay. Uh, I knew you owned the yacht. You, you were the one that taught me how to drive the yacht, but yeah, you, yeah. You, you didn't tell me you yeah. had a plane. Wow. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. Now, <laughs> hold on. Let's let's make that past tense because. Oh, oh okay. Now, okay. Yeah. No, it was it was during the time we met. Uh, um, I have a plane that I had a plane, and I'll send you pictures of me flying it, and the plane itself. Okay. Um, I've always wanted to either fly or on a boat. Uh, now the latest thing is on an island, my wife and I, on an island. So oh. we're looking at, into uh, South Pacific where Fiji is. We're thinking of retiring in Fiji. Oh, so okay. we'll see. Um, it's just, I keep preaching that you get one shot. You might as well live an awesome life. Now, as a kid, let me bring you, let's go back to the part of my growing up part. As a kid, I was alone for five years to my uh, younger brother, Donnie, came into my life. Uh, he was, uh, well, anyway, coming up as a kid, school wasn't impressed upon me as important. So I really didn't do well in school. You know, it's not a sad story. It really isn't. I just still doing well in life yeah 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 it's not a yeah. sad story um uh, my mom and her uh siblings and her relatives didn't finish either grade school or high school or junior high i was lucky i finished them all i finished i you know it was a terrible struggle i didn't learn how to read until i was 22 years old wow yeah that part so i was huh. in a lot of learning disability classes you know uh LDC or whatever, ESL, whatever. I was in a lot of those classes uh, because I was basically pushed along, okay, through school. And school really looked at you as a dollar, you know, mm -hmm. public school. Yeah, so yeah. public school was really not a great thing. But um, I taught myself how to read because I was frustrated. I missed out on a lot of things for not knowing how to read, you know. Um, and I, how should I say, I empowered myself by being determined that guy can do it, I can do it. I just got to figure out how to do it. So uh, learning how to read came through uh, hooked on phonics, uh, constantly being frustrated and my stepmother came into my life. She was an English teacher. My dad remarried. She was an English teacher. And she was determined to teach me how to read. It didn't work. I wasn't ready. Mm. I wasn't ready. I had a wonderful stepfather, uh, James Davis. He uh, taught my brother and I the ethic of working every morning at 4 30 a.m monday through saturday his feet would hit the floor and as a young kid i'm looking at that right and i'm like this guy going he constantly every morning he didn't have a lot to say but all his actions speak all his actions kept a roof over our head food in our mouth clothes on our back we we never wanted we never wanted for the needs the necessities you know what I mean? He never wanted for the necessities. He also, I could go to him and say, I need lunch money. Never refuses. But back then that was 10 cents to a quarter <laughs> for lunch money, you know. Yeah. You know, and uh we came up through the through the uh government system because we were poor, you know, and my brother and I I think I was 16 or 17. We sat in the front room of the house we lived in. And we said, when we grew up, we sat there and imagined the type of life we want at, at teenagers, you know? He was four years behind me. 
And we sat there and we talked about it and we talked about it. And at the age of 17 and a half, I graduated, 17, I graduated out of Shaw High School, East Cleveland, Ohio. I went on into the service. I did 10 year stretch there. And uh, I graduated out of Shaw High School in 79. I come out in 89 and I come out here. Um, I married, I have one biological son, one stepson. Biological son is Terry Jr. Terry Lamon Ray, who didn't take my last name. I have uh, six grandkids. I have an uh, older son, uh, Dwayne. He'll be 40 in April, April 16th. And uh, I've always told them, there's nothing you can't do. Nothing. And I say, what I'm doing, you can do 10 times better. But you're standing in your own way. That's what a lot of people have a big problem with, standing in their own way. Yeah. They always pump the brakes on, oh, this might happen. That might. They always worried about what might happen. Mm. The unknown. Man, I've messed up so much stuff. <laughs> I've tried so much and go, whoops. <laughs> I think my biggest, I think what my biggest strength is, I don't care. I keep trying anyway. I keep trying. I don't care how many mistakes, I keep trying and I keep trying and I keep trying. And I waste, I don't know if I should say I waste, but I spend more time on trying to get it, trying to get it, trying to get it, trying to get it, that I might miss a whole lot of other stuff. But once I got it, okay, let me go to the next thing. Let me try to, try to get it, try to get it. That's what I do. I just track stuff and try and try and try. I just don't care. I gotta try, you know? And in the midst of trying, I have a lot of fun. I have a lot of fun and I don't, I encourage people that life is a rehearsal, period. Life is a rehearsal. You cannot go at, at something and already know how to do it as an expert right away. You've got to start mm -hmm. somewhere, mm -hmm. you've got to start. So I make the phrase life 101 is a big factor in everybody's life. Life 101, okay? Uh, a lot of people think the life 101 is about going to work every day. You might as well be a hamster on a wheel, round around the circle, you know? And a lot of people go to jobs, making them sick, they hate it, you know, all kinds of stuff. My biggest challenge uh, in life was being separated from my sons, divorcing their mother. That was a big you know, because I live to be a great dad. That's what I want. I wanted to be a great father. I wanted to grow up with my kids and just do everything. Just do everything. Now, with that being said, I said, well, if I can't do that, let me set a great example. I had my son tell me on my birthday, Terry Jr., on my birthday, this just, this my biological, just took me just floored me. It was one of the greatest birthday gifts I could ever get. He says to me, Dad, I've been here in California for like 15 years now. And out of all the men I've met here, out of all of them, they're okay. But you, Dad, you're the only man I can say I can look up to. Do you know that just, <laughs> oh, man, that just did everything for me, you know? Mm -hmm. um, it was like he's paid attention to all the things I'm doing and try to set examples and uh, give show them you if you take this path try this path you know and he's saying to me yeah you know I can look up to you because you do what you say you're gonna do or you're doing things that I've never seen other men do well there's other men that do what I do but he just haven't seen it. And I happen to be his dad. That just, oh man. <laughs> That's, I mean, that, my heart is just full. It's full. So, like I said, if I have to give any message at all, just any. Live. Always say yes to your dreams. Never sit 
on a dream too long. Get on the horse. Put your knee pads on, your helmet on, whatever you need to put on. It's going to buck you because it's not going to be easy. It's going to be it's going to be against what your mind or your heart might what your mind is going to say. This is too hard. But your heart is going to say, let's give it a try. But your mind is going to say, why should I do that? That's like work. Well, you're not going to figure it out if you don't work. Mm-hmm. No. And you know this. I've watched you on Instagram. I've seen you do your, your improvement on your calisthenics. All that. Oh, yes. I, mean, I was watching you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm very, I'm a big fan of yours. Thank okay. you, Terry. I'm big a big fan, fan of, yours. of yours. No, I, I just like your son, I admire you a lot. And that's why I wanted you on this podcast because I think you you have a great story to tell. And well, you, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. You are is it Amy? Amy, yeah. Yes. You two impressed the heck out of the day we was on the boat and I sat down and I talked to you, we was on the way back, right? You two sat there and listened to me. I'm going, wow, they got a gift. You know, keep that gift because you will never know nothing if you're not hearing anything. You know, you got to hear stuff before you know stuff, just like research, anything else. Um, Now, to move on with the story, when I come out of the service, I come I come here and oh what I let me give you my MOS when I was in the service. Let's let's kind of fill in some blanks. Sure. Started out as a 11 Bravo. That is actually the guy with a gun on the front line. Oh, okay. I didn't, yeah, yeah. Wow. I didn't care for that much. So I went into sniper training. Okay. Okay. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I did. Uh, did that uh, first six years, I was what they call a barometer guy. The guy that tells the guy the wind uh, direction, how fast it's going, the uh, rotation of the earth, et cetera, et cetera. I was his information guy. Mm-hmm. The last four years, I was the guy behind the, the scope. Uh, now, I never saw, never saw any action from 79 to 89. No, didn't see any action. But that, that's what my MOS coming out in the service was. Okay, of course, I come out to get a job. Oh, we don't have jobs. <laughs> we don't have jobs for snipers, okay, at the time. So uh, that prompted me into real estate, my own businesses, and uh, that, from that point on, my last business that I operated was uh, on operator concrete truck here in California, I own two concrete trucks. And I met an inspector, I met an inspector. And I said, hey, what do you do? He said, I'm an inspector. I used to do what you're doing for seven years. And I knew I didn't want to do it, but he was working for a company See, I was on an operator, so I had my own company. Mm-hmm. And he said, this is how you get into it. I looked into it. From that point on, I've been a deputy inspector for the city of Los Angeles uh, ever since. 28 years of this, and it's been great. It's been a great run, okay? Um, I must say that it has financed an awful lot in my life. And I, I'm a retired doing this. Okay, I'm a retired doing this. So I have no complaint. I suggest to people, say I don't have a college degree. No. I have some college, but not a college degree in anything that would be significant to say. Uh, but this, I make more than a whole lot of people with a college degree. And I encourage people that if they have some interest in construction or inspection at all, it'd be a good idea. Uh, now, to come up to par, to come up to where I'm at now, uh, I'm looking to adventure more. Like I said, Sandra and I are looking into buying an island. Uh, 
buying an island? Yes, buying a island. Wow. Okay. Okay. Well, it's out of the box. Out of the box. You get it? Always out of the box. Okay. Some, see, you have to understand. In life, I believe that I was born a tiger. Okay. A tiger does not hire a hunter to go get his food, correct? Mm -hmm. So why should I sit around and wait on the government or anyone, okay, to supply or to provide me with what I need? Okay, this is just to set an example for kids, grandkids, and others that you should be responsible for you. That's basically what I'm coming back to accepting self-responsibility, okay? Always believe in having more than one barn, horse in the barn to ride. Always have, always have and not need, need not have. Oh, okay, never let no one person or thing stop you from getting where you need to go, okay? Or want to go or want to do. See, the day you're born, Every man, woman, child, whoever you are, inherits the earth. You inherit the earth. So the whole earth is your real estate. There's no such thing as, uh, as man put it, uh, states, countries, boundary lines, uh, illegal aliens, all that. That's, that's a crock of crap. The day you're born, you inherit the earth. How, how else can you put it? Okay. Um, we need to learn to uh, be able to be in harmony with the wildlife, et cetera, et cetera. No, we don't. We want to control them. We want to cage them. We want to, oh, they're wild. No, the earth started out as the wild just because they put down some asphalt, concrete, and stop signs. They still the wild. And we must learn to adapt to get along on this earth. Okay, and I'm gonna explore as much of it as I can. I've been around the world six times. I'm gonna explore as much of it as I can because I inherited this earth. It has nothing to do with racism, none of that. It's just a fact. You travel yourself, okay? And that's how you become more educated. You have to see people where they, meet them where they stand. Learn their language, learn the cuisine, eat cuisine, love, love, love the earth, basically, because it's your only home. You come from it, you're going back to it. This is your home. And if you're fighting over something that you cannot reproduce, what does that say? <laughs> you're not bright. But uh, regardless of that, could you repeat that? When you're fighting over something you cannot reproduce? Reproduce. Man cannot reproduce dirt. He cannot reproduce the earth. He can only destroy. He's been the cancer to the earth. Man does not reproduce. Man destroys. He has never done anything to help the longevity of the earth. Like the oil coming from the earth? Hmm. Whose bright idea was that? Now the earth is heating up. Whose bright idea was that? For the convenience of being able to get from one point, point A to point B, when people hundreds of years used to walk over countries hundreds of miles and live longer. So how bright are we really? When all you have to do is appreciate what's here. This is given freely. Earth is given freely. It's a gift to you. Nothing to do with religion. It's a gift to you. Man's supposed to be able to eat all the vegetation that grows from the earth. We're not supposed to be digesting meat. We wasn't designed for that. But that's going on to me. So I'm what wondering. I'm, wait, wait, wait. So, so uh, what's your diet right now? Horrible. <laughs> but are, are, you, horrible. are you eating meat? Wait. Are you yeah. eating meat? You what are meat? Okay. Yeah, yeah. What I'm saying, the... the the concept of the very beginning, we were able to eat all the vegetation. 
okay? Um, you can still to this day, if you get away from city, you can find vegetation to eat. You can find the aloe vera is good for uh, infection, okay, to stop off infections. And honey is a good band-aid. Sap from a tree is a good band-aid. Uh, you can get water from a tree. You can get water if you dig far enough. You can, there's it's so many, well, I don't know if you know, I owned a, uh, I had a company called TLP Survival. Gadgets. Yeah, I remember that, yeah. Yeah, and I, on my blog, I put on there all the different ways of, if you don't have water, how to get water from the earth. If you don't know how, uh, what it be, what direction, northeast, southwest, how, I had so many, I had blogs on there that tell you how to do, survive without the city all together. All together. Okay. Plain old survival, but that's another one of my adventures that I tried and people wasn't very accepting. It wasn't very, I don't think people are ready to or understand that if you don't practice sharpening your sword, meaning sharpening your sword, meaning learning practical application, learn how to start a fire, learn how, how to hunt, how to find water, how to uh, can things, grow things. These things are part of sharpening your tool, part of learning how to, uh, learning what practical application is, okay? Learning how to do first aid, apply bandages, a tourniquet, et cetera, et cetera. All these things are part of practical application of survival. We should, kids and people in general should be taught that as a basic not school, that first, because I put the analogy to people all the time and they, they get puzzled. If we had to start civilization all over, uh, all over, none of, no, no power, no electricity, no nothing, what would be the essential, the essential people that would be needed to get started? Well, a farmer. He would know the pH of the dirt. He would know how to test the uh, dirt for soil for fertilizer, okay, to be fertile, to grow anything. He would be the very first person because are you gonna eat or are you not? Then you have a carpenter, okay, a shelter. Then you have a hunter. So the hunter has to go out and people still eat meat, okay? Them three right there are gonna be your main base. Nowadays, the doctor's not even needed because the simple fact is, who the first person to talk to? Not even the patient, the nurse. They go to the nurse for information first before they even come talk to you. Okay, you wouldn't need a lawyer, wouldn't need a judge, wouldn't need the guy to McDonald's. All these jobs that we do now are busy work. They keep you from practicing how to sharpen your, your tool, how to learn practical application. And these are basic things that you will never be taught. Were you taught in school how important rock and dirt is? Nope. Nope. It's the most important thing there is because they cannot what? Reproduce it, can they? They can't reproduce rock and dirt. You cannot add on to the earth. You can't. They can't do it. So it's the most important thing there is. Okay. As far as... Um, a financial and an asset trading asset, collateral asset, okay? That's the reason why I put as much behind me as I could. I invested in as much as I could because I know if I need a loan, what does the bank ask for? Do you have any liquidable assets that we can lean against just in case you default on your payments? They don't want a car. They don't want a house. They can care less about your job. Liquidable assets, rock and dirt. Doesn't have to have anything built on. Huh. Its value never declines. Unless you buy landfill or something, or, you know, swamp, that might be something different. But the bank also knows that they can sublease and get their money back and still own the land that you lose. But these are things that I'm saying, just going on tantric, that I try to show my 
kids and grandkids that you got to think outside the box because they always want you in the box. So I invest in things that I know they don't want me to know about. It's like, you've heard of Art of War, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, one of the passages in there say, always be where your enemy doesn't expect you to be. Don't expect me to be buying rock and dirt. Not calling anybody the enemy, but that's just one of the passages that's in there. My way of thinking. I read that back when that passage and several passages from that part of war is a, some, of, some of my thinking. It's just some of my thinking. So with that being said, I don't want to take up all your time. I think you need to say one or two things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so pose some questions. I'll do what I can to answer if I have an answer tomorrow. All right. Well, I was just uh, <laughs> lost in thought and <laughs> listening to what you were saying uh, so what are your plans right now so I, I i remember you were you were planning to uh i think go to south america or somewhere yes. along the and then yeah. now it's fiji well i was at a i don't know if i want to say a low at the time that i was going to pick up anchor and go because i uh had had my field won with America, just as it is. And then past relationships had me, you know, really bummed out. And then the love of my life came into my life. And um, we hit it off and it just, it just blossomed and she, one of my first dreams I had told her about was owning an island. She's insisting on I own the island. I want to own it down south, so that means I will pull up anchor here once we make the purchase and see if we can get this boat there, sail it there. Uh, so down south, and Fiji is down south, from what I understand. Uh, the plan is basically still there. But the first plan was to end up in either uh, Costa Rica or, but I did go to Costa Rica. I did go to visit on my own. Uh, that was that was amazing. Everything's green. Wow. Everything's green. It is, was well, tropical. Okay. It's just an amazing place. The people are just awesome. I suggest if you haven't, go. It will be the- a treat. So, so you sailed there? No, 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 no. Oh, I, okay. I, flew. I flew. Oh, oh, flew. okay. Um, did I ever see the pictures when we sailed to the island? No, Anson? I don't think you've shown me. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, text it to you. Okay, and, uh, all right. It, all it's right. a video. It's a slight, about 23, 24 second video. Okay. Of us sitting. My neighbor and I, I, no, Sandra, my neighbor and I, he went on his boat, so he's videoing us as we're sailing. Uh, to the islands here. Anyway, back to what I was saying, uh, or it would have been uh, in uh, South America. Uh, things would have been. Oh, I didn't forget. But it was in, in Chile, down in Brazil. Uh, but the plan has only slightly changed because I have a wife now and I'm a happy camper. Okay. She's not trying to deter me from my dream. She's actually trying to encourage me to do the ultimate dream is get our own island, which I think uh, that's the way to go. That's the way to go. Um, I've never been this happy. I've always been a guy that do a, do things and really never celebrate them, just move on to the next thing, mm-hmm. you know? And that is not healthy, you know? I had to I had to learn to um, celebrate the accomplishments because I've accomplished a lot, a lot of things, but just doing them for the sake of doing them. And you gotta do things and enjoy things. 
you know, that is, that's, if there's a lesson to be learned, enjoy what you're doing. Don't just do it just because you want to try it out. And that's what my premise was a lot, just to try it out. Okay. Now, like we went uh, jet skiing and we went parasailing, Sandra and I, when we got together. Um, we went jet skiing. I had been on a jet ski before. She never had. And I said, well, that's my cue. Got to go. <laughs> Got to go. Gotta go. Yeah. So there's a story to this. We went. And she had a hat on. And I made a turn and it came off. So I hadn't realized all the jumping and turning and jumping and turning. This jet ski was filling up with water. Not I, I didn't know. So we went to turn around and go get it. It got heavy on one side and we dumped off. And we got back on just fine. And um, then it, it was hilarious. Uh, I had to make some promises, <laughs> very expensive promises, <laughs> but I've held, upheld my, my part of the bargain. Uh, we went parasailing. I've never been before. She's never been before. And I'm up there, we're up in the air. And I'm going, I see the people down, hey, look at us. <laughs> they thought I was crazy. She thought I was crazy. But it was, it, I was just excited. It, it, I was enjoying it. See, it took me this long to actually, oh my God, this is great. Oh, I gotta do it, I gotta do it. So um, she's she's terrified. She's up there, oh, 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 oh. so um, it was it was it was a wonderful thing. I never, never thought that I could have so much fun, but I did. I did. And back to what I was saying, the uh, island thing, we have been doing our research. And we see it to be, we see it to be affordable. You, you know, see it to be so a what? Affordable. Affordable. Okay. Less than what you it, less than what you can buy a house in California. Really. Hundreds of thousands less. Really. How much? Now are we they're talking, not. Then? Well, they start from thirty-nine thousand. They're not oh. the most favorable places. Okay. Then you can get you can get a really nice one for three hundred thousand in favorable mm. places. All right. Okay. Now you gotta also understand if you buy an island down south, you got all those tropical storms coming. You might have an island one day and not have a <laughs> storm come through. Now we were looking up in uh what is it, Canada, where it's cold as hell, but the weather pattern is a lot more tolerable doing due to the fact that you don't have so many different tropical tornadoes and et cetera, et cetera. Uh -huh. Okay. And the prices are a lot more uh, conducive to a working man's uh, salary. You get what okay. I'm saying? But there you go again. Depends on how bad you want it, what your research is. Okay. And uh, with that being said, uh, what are you willing to do for your dream? You see? So, uh, I've already looked into setting up solar panels, generators. I'm gung ho. It's just a matter of uh, our years for the next three years. We've we've got things tied up, and that's our five to ten year retirement okay. on the island. All okay, right. so we we've, we've got. Uh, three-year plan already in motion, five-year plan, 10-year plan, okay? So I believe in having, I believe in making goals for each year to get certain things done each year, okay? And goals that need to be met. And these goals are fantasies that we can actually see. We're no longer going, oh, I wish. We're going, okay, at this date, we should have this done. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're not just wishing on it or dreaming on it. So, um, yeah, this is, this is, I'm going to tell you, this has been a great life. I haven't really had, I've had setbacks, but
I just stayed determined. I've had setbacks, I've had delays. I had people to come into my life to try to reroute me, distract me, okay? But I've overcome those people and distractions and, de and delays and detours. My biggest goal in life, let's go there, my biggest goal in life to live to be 105. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Now, what that's going to take, I'm starting now at 60, changing a lot of my mental thought. I've got positive mental thought. I've got drive. But I'm also trying to change the equation by getting off meat. Um, I've tried it over and over. It's it's a tough thing. It is tough. Uh, yeah, tough. I think me, I think it's a disease. <laughs> really do. I think it's a sickness. Really? Me, I think it's a sickness because you're supposed to do things in moderation. Therefore, your body will not have to deal with so many drastic uh traumas and ups and downs. If you do things in moderation, don't do too much of anything. Your body doesn't have to adjust to, you know, so many drastic things. But some of us will overcompensate, well, not overcompensate, overdo things, you know, in excess. Um, and I have a bad habit of I love to eat eight times a day because my metabolism, I never, I never get fat. I never get overweight. Okay. For all the viewers who don't know this, Terry, you were junior Hercules? or Yeah, yeah, in, in, in the service, yeah. Yes, you're right. I won Junior Hercules. He uh, yeah. was 20, 23 in Germany, Osbach, Germany, Hindenburg. And the only reason why I won that, it was by uh, 0 0.5 point uh, in, 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 in uh, points. You know, you, you get so many points per what you lift. Okay. What, what you know, just like like they do on the uh, Olympics, they give you so many points. It's point five. I won by a point zero five. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, that's how <laughs> in my weight class. So you got to remember, it's a weight class. It's a weight class always. I was in the weight class. I went into service at one hundred and twenty three pounds. My weight class was between one forty to one sixty. And I was weighing 155. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. I outbench the guy that was weighing 160 by, let me see, how many pounds? I think like five pounds okay. of weight more. Uh, I got two reps out of that. No, three reps. You got to qualify with three reps. And it was bench press. Can you believe that? I'll be, I, I beat him by five pounds bench press. And um my squat i came in second place on that so it was bench press squat deadlift uh and uh military press okay those those four military press and bench press came in first place squat i came in second place i came in first place in uh deadlift because i was real good at deadlift oh and Second place on uh, on uh, military press over the shoulders, uh -huh. and uh, I, I've I've got a, still pretty good on deadlift, uh, and I won by zero point five uh, in points, and that was one of the one of the proudest moments of my life too. I enjoyed that, uh, and their their workout ethic is crazy. You know how a boxer and a and a and a cyclist have the, the most mad workout ethic. Mm -hmm. You know, a boxer yeah, has a, yeah, a, just... he's a, he's a machine. Mm -hmm. Same thing with, with cycling. They are machines, hundreds and hundreds of miles. But I don't think they have anything over uh, them German there. They, those guys are just. And my trainer, there was many a days I couldn't get out of bed. He'd come drag me out of bed. Really? He dragged me out of bed. You know, I was in, I was in uh, ice tubs because I was sore. 
uh-huh. you know, just the whole, it was the whole, but I won. I won. I, I, I can never, I'll never forget that. I'm glad you brought that up. I, those are the days. Those are the days. <laughs> those are the days. And I was young. I had that, uh, can't bring no smoke on me. I had an S on my chest. I was, I was made out of bounce back rub. Bring it on. Can't bring us, because like when I was in the service, you bring up, when I was in the service, when I was in basic training, uh, I had these drill sergeants and they hated me. <laughs> they hated me because they put, they put, they put the, for punishment for me, they thought, because I had ran marathons in high school. I had ran marathons in high school. Uh, they thought they could hurt me by putting a 125 pound bag on the back of me. And I only weighed 123. So half the time oh. I was leaning forward. I was leaning forward trying to carry that bag. Wait, okay. Terry, Terry, how, how tall are you? I'm 5'11 right now. 5'11, 5'11 at 123 pounds. That's, that is very, very thin. slim. Very slim. slim. I was, yeah. I was about as slim as a dime. <laughs> about mm. as slim as a dime. They see all my, uh, all the other privates along me, I was a private. Uh, they either were obese and they didn't last or they didn't have the determination mental state or they were thin like me, okay? And we started out with like 60 of us. 15 actually came out of that, that platoon. 15 out of 60. So they weeded them out pretty good. So one day we had to do what they call uh, not the mountain it was, or hill it was. Uh, but everybody had to put on a pack. Everybody had to wear uh, boots, okay? Had to wear their army boots. So that was hard. By the time we got to that mountain, that hill, I was wearing 135. So 10 pounds better. Uh, or 13 pounds better. Went to run up that hill and the sergeant said, last one up the hill, take your pack off. You're going to do 100 push-ups, 200 sit-ups. Just something crazy to scare you to death. You know, why in heck you could do that after running up that hill? Mm -hmm. Well, the sergeant said, "Uh, those those of you that can catch up with me or keep up with me, you can watch the other ones do the push-ups. So that wasn't much incentive anyway. Mm -hmm. Well, the sergeant took off. He didn't have no backpack on, mm. no nothing. I'm running past him talking about, Sergeant, you can't bring no smoke on me. <laughs> Pro-V, get down and do push-ups with that damn pack on. <laughs> <laughs> he, see, here's the thing. I ran up that hill hollering that. He told his <laughs> CO, Captain, this one right here, we need to make him a uh, platoon leader. And that's what they did. Name your platoon leader. I ran up there. Now, what he did, he made me do those push ups. He said, Come on, Pro. We're going back down here. Pro B, come on. We're going back down here. I'm going to race you again. He ran up there. You can't bring no smoke on me. <laughs> he said, Sit down. Sir. Sit down. I'm tired of you. I'm tired of you. <laughs> hey, I ran marathons. I, I ran. 100 yard dash, it didn't matter. <laughs> and the reason why they couldn't stand me is because I made them look bad in front of all the other privates. And mm-hmm. they were down there just cracking up. <laughs> oh, that was, that was the day. That was the day. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, I enjoyed basic training because it wasn't just, I was running marathons. I was in high school. I, you know, af- being an athlete was my thing. So it just didn't bother me, you know? So, it was fun. I enjoyed it, uh, but that's what the, that's what those days were about. And you know, I, like I said, I haven't really had a life that my childhood was rather difficult. But you know, it was what it was. You know, and I got through it. I got through it. You know, and it turned out pretty good. I I must say, I'm doing pretty good. You know, actually, probably better. And I think good. you're doing really well for yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And you know. What I can say I've gotten from life right now, 
Um, I've had to learn that you just cannot let everything get you down. You can't take life, what people do pers personally against you, or even if, even, even if it's not even against you, just what people do, you know, uh, a lot of people aren't, uh, aren't, uh, yes. how should I say? A lot of people want to make everything about them. No, and it's not, this is, this is a, real big world it's not a small world it's a real big world and you got to realize you you, you got enough elbow room everybody's not on the same path you're on your path is yours enjoy it just have some fun that's the biggest thing i can put out find something to laugh about because there's always plenty to cry about. there's so many people crying i mean go through the day and my wife and i we laugh and giggle all day you think we're little kids we find something to laugh about all day, even if it's just cr cracking jokes on each other, okay? We do a lot of playing Uno together, dominoes, we dance. We just do everything. And don't let us be out on the road and see something we ain't never saw. <laughs> Put it in the park, let's go, check it out. It doesn't matter what it is, okay? Everything, you know, love the trees, love them. They've been here for hundreds of years. Love the animals, love everything. Just have fun. Enjoy everything you can enjoy, okay? Because you're not guaranteed a second of the day. So if you can laugh all day, that was a good day. That was a good day, okay? If you can laugh half the day, that was a good day. But try to laugh. Just anything to, it's good for your heart. It's good for your blood pressure. It's just good for you. It's just plain old good for you. So that's basically it. I'm, I'm a, what should I say? I'm looking forward to more fun. And I'm looking forward to your name and lights. I haven't, I haven't forgot that. You, I'm looking forward to you and Amy's names and lights. Okay, so I can say, yeah, I knew him. I knew him. Because you, <laughs> you're a great person. I mean, you, you, you've inspired me. You and Amy have inspired me. We, I brag about you. Inspire you inspire me, Terry. I brag you about you me, all my kids, everybody I know. I said, you know, I know Albert, Kevin Amy, they are awesome people. You are. You, you, Sandra, me and Amy, we got to go to a camping trip sometime. Catalina. Great, great, great. Okay. Man, that'd be great. When? Yeah. Is next week okay? Next weekend? Next weekend. Okay. Or, okay. Uh, where? Where? I need to talk to Sandra first. But okay. Where? Well, why don't we plan this after the podcast? <laughs> well, we we, we yeah, plan, yeah. We plan this. We plan yeah. this after this. Okay. Too. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. But but we'll make plans. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be great. That yeah. would be great. That would be great. All right. All right. So, I've got a few things I need to uh, people I need to meet today. Okay. But do me a favor. Please keep kiss Amy from me, okay? Until I okay, all right. But I miss right. her, and I hope she's having a wonderful life because I am. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having, and that's what I must say. I am having a wonderful life. I have no regrets about mine at all. I mean, you know, there's nothing. There's no but. There's no if. There's no if this happened. That no. It's just great. Plain old great. Mm -hmm. So I want to thank you for this. I want to thank you, Terry. Thank you so much. You had so many wise words to say. Um, you know what I can do, to, do for you as well? I can. I started to write a book about my life. Uh, I can send it over to you. And you can, oh, yeah. OK. I, started, I actually started to write a book. OK. Uh, didn't get around to finish it at just the very beginning of it, I think. Uh, let's see if I can find it. I was writing for my grandkids. And uh, let me look and see if I can find it and I'll text it to you. Yeah, definitely. Okay. And we got to meet up. And yeah, but uh, tell Sandra I look forward to meeting her very soon. 
and I look forward to introducing Amy to her too. Okay. Um, let me yeah. let me okay okay I'll let her know I'll let her okay. know. But this was this was a great episode one. I'd love to have you on for another one because I'm I'm sure we have a lot more Plenty to talk awesome. about. Yeah. 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 In the meantime, I think I should be saying Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. When is your birth? <laughs> when is your birthday? August. Okay. Yeah. I'll probably talk to you before then. Okay. okay. All right. And take care of yourself. Thank you so much. All right, Terry. I'll see you soon. Yes, you will. Okay. Bye. Bye.